We now have a controller and we have an endpoint and we're returning a uh, response in JSON format, but we've actually just hard coded in the values for now. So what I want to do now is just figure out what is going to be the flow. What will this controller do? Where will it send the traffic in order to get us to this point uh, where we can send back a successful response with the correct data? So let's think about the steps that we're going to use here. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. We've said what we'd like to do is take the data which is being posted into our service and deserialize it into a data transfer object. So that can be step number one. Deserialize data into a data transfer object. So let's have a think about what that data transfer object is and what it represents. For lack of a better name, it's an inquiry. So we're sending an inquiry into the service to see what is the lowest price that we can get for this set of data. So for now, we'll just call it an inquiry DTO. So next, what we want to do is actually take that object and pass it into something. So it's going to be like a, a promotions filter in order to find the right promotions and to apply the correct uh, promotion to it. So pass the inquiry into a promotions filter and then the appropriate promotion will be applied. Step three, return the modified inquiry and then it'll get serialized again back into JSON and sent as the JSON response here. So I'm just going to create a quick notes file just so that we can sort of visualize what it is that we're trying to do there. Okay, so we're going to pass our inquiry DTO into the promotions filter. And so that will find uh, the product to which it applies and then the promotions which are related to that product. And then we need to think about what we're going to do with each promotion. So the first thing that we're definitely going to need to do is... Uh, get it to ask the question, does this promotion apply? So, for example, in the uh, the example that we looked at earlier on, we said if it's going to be like a Black Friday sale. So, in order for that to apply, you'd be looking at the actual request date and seeing, is that request, does that request date match Black Friday? Or these Black Friday sales that sometimes last for a week, does it fall within a particular date range? In which case, then that promotion would be applicable. And I suppose then the next step will be to either add um, the promotion to the inquiry uh, DTO, to the data transfer object, or do we want to just modify the data transfer object, just modify, uh, for example, the price and the discounted price fields on the data transfer object. I've not actually made my mind up of which of these two approaches I'm going to take yet. One of the things which would drive this would be the business requirements. So you'd probably have clear business requirements, which would say one or the other, either yes, uh, add all the promotions to the transfer object so that we have all the data to look at when it gets sent back, or just go ahead and just modify the uh, inquiry to add the discounted price and the price or whatever fields are required. So like I say, I've not my, made my mind up on which approach I'm going to take yet, but I'll decide that as we move along. It's not that important right now. Our first task in order to make any of this happen will be to go ahead and create that data transfer object. So in promotions engine, we're going to go into source and then I'm going to create a directory called DTO, which can hold all the data transfer objects and interfaces which relate to them, etc. And then we need to give this a name. So I'd like to go with something fairly explicit because there might be other data transfer objects for uh, other types of promotions or price inquiries. So let's go with a good descriptive name and I'll call this lower price inquiry or lowest price inquiry. Okay, so as you can see there, the namespace is app DTO and the class is lowest price inquiry. Uh, I'd like this to implement an interface or so a common interface for all inquiries. So we'll just go with promotion inquiry interface for the time being. Most of my code or a lot of my code, I, I never try and go with the permanent um, final product. It's just stuff that I work out while I'm figuring things out and then 
if I need to change things, it's not a big deal to me. By working that way, it gives you more flexibility. If you were just going for your final product, then you just aim straight for that target. Whereas if uh, I just have like a loose approach, then it just leaves the field open for all different kinds of or more options as we work through this. So I'm obviously going to need to go and create that interface. The next thing I'll need to do will be to add all of these properties. So one of the reasons why I've split down this uh, DTO and gone for something specific like lowest price interface is because you might have all different scenarios where you have different items of data and only some items of data will apply to certain scenarios. So you don't want to get in a situation where you're passing in like a hundred inputs in order to use only five of them. So that's why I like to break things down to that level of granularity. So we're only going to have a handful of fields on our lowest price inquiry. So private uh, int, and this will be the product ID. And so behind the scenes, I'm just going to do the rest of these because it'll probably take me a couple of minutes to do them all. That's all of those in place. And then for the getters and setters, I can get PHP Storm to do the hard work for me. So on Mac, I hit Control and Enter. This little generate menu pops up here. So I'm looking for getters and setters. And then I hold shift and just go down the whole list. And that will create me a getter and setter for all of those. And so the getters and setters will be used in uh, the serialization, which we'll come on to in a minute. Okay, great. So now we have all of our properties for our lowest price inquiry data transfer object. And now we just need to go and figure out how we're going to take the data which gets posted in to our service and serialize or deserialize that into this lowest price inquiry ob uh, class object. We're going to need Symphony's serializer. This doesn't come with the um, skeleton install of Symphony, so it's something that we're going to have to go to Composer and require this. So, Composer, require serializer. In order to be able to use the serializer, we're going to take advantage of auto wiring. Uh, and we can do that using controller methods. But first, we need to take our product controller and we need to extend abstract controller. Okay, so now as the third argument to our lowest price route method here, we're going to say a serializer interface. And then just give that the variable a name of serializer. And then first off, what we'll do, because I'm going to explain auto wiring a little bit to you, is we'll just dump out serializer. Okay, then we'll go over to Postman. What we need to do in order for this to work is to uncheck the box where we're using the force fail header. You should see a little tick to the side of that. Just uncheck that and it means that won't get used. And then just send the request. Okay, so if we preview this, you'll see that we are looking at an instance of Symphony Component Serializer Serializer. So what has happened there? Auto wiring enables you to use type hints in constructors and also in controller methods and automatically pass correct services to your classes and objects. So services, think of services as classes which do work. They perform functions uh, rather than the type of classes which are more associated with data. So why when I type hint serializer interface like this, do I get an object of type serializer? And the reason is, it's because a serializer interface is wired as an alias for the serializer. So when I ask for the container for a serializer interface, I get a serializer back. And so, like I say, out of the box, auto wiring works in constructors and in controller methods. Uh, only it won't automatically wire any class methods on classes which you create anyway let's now take our serializer and do what we said we wanted to do with it so the first uh, task here or what we're going to finish on here is we're going to try and deserialize our json uh, data into our inquiry dto so lowest price inquiry equals and you do it like this serializer we want to deserialize and so the first argument is the data. We can get that from the request get content. The second 
argument is the class which you want to deserialize into in order to create our lowest price inquiry object. So that will be our lowest price inquiry class. I'm just going to make my font a bit small so this fits on. And then the final argument is the format. So it's coming in JSON format. And so now all we need to do really is just dump this out to see if it's worked. Then back over to Postman, hit send. Okay, great stuff. So as you can see here, we have an app DTO lowest price inquiry and our fields have been filled. We have a product ID of one, quantity five, request location UK, voucher code is this, request date is this. So I've made some pretty good progress there. In the next one, I wanna continue working from the outside in. So I think that would mean that our next step will be to actually serialize back into JSON, but with the added fields, because we're taking some input fields there, but we want to actually modify our DTO by adding these new fields here, price, discounted price, promotion ID and, promote, and promotion name. So we'll set uh, those values on our lowest price inquiry, and then we'll serialize back into JSON, and then we should be able to send that back instead of these hard-coded values here. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. Each week I release a number of new recordings. If you'd like to be informed about my upcoming videos as well as receive exclusive content, discounts and early access to my new videos, you can join my mailing list by following the link underneath this video.